Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So it's been a while since I did a wear, want, watch, read, eat, succeed and it's time to do another one. I have so many new things that I really really love and I just really enjoy doing these videos because they're super chatty and we cover so much ground in terms of fashion items, things on my list that I would like to buy, um, things that I've loved eating and drinking. I think the very last one or maybe the one before I had alcohol in it and it felt so edgy and rebellious. And I do like a glass of wine or an after dinner drink once in a while. Let's get right into it and I will let you know all of my favorite things for the last few months. Number one is leather bottoms and you guys already know this I'm well aware um, from my five days of fashion that I did recently in my trends video um, I think both of those videos had leather bottoms in them but the piece that I talked about in that one is my halogen leather skirt I'll link it down below again um, but what I want to talk today about is pants because it's still pretty cold in Vancouver, so I wouldn't say that I wake up every day feeling super excited about having my legs exposed, um, even with, you know, opaque tights, and it's definitely too early in the season for sheer tights. I got a really weird comment about how I was ruining my outfits by wearing opaque tights. That's the only way that, you know, in Canada, even on the West Coast, you can wear a skirt or a dress in January, February, you know? So um, I'm going to show you what my favorite pants are right now. And one of them I'm actually wearing. Um, and they're looking super shiny right now because of the lighting, but they're actually more of a matte finish. These are leather leggings from Club Monaco. And you can see they have the fabric back and it's a ponte fabric. So it's really stretchy and thick. I feel like proper pants that you don't have to wear wear like a dress on top of um, because they're you know slim fitting but not super super tight that I really want to reach for and wear consistently and that are comfortable enough that I would wear them at the weekend and so I'm really excited to have this pair and they're on clearance on Club Monaco right now at a big discount. Second pair of pants I will try on they are covered in fur and they're really wrinkly and so you guys are gonna have to take my word for that for it that like they actually really don't wrinkle when you wash them these are my halogen trousers but these are the new versions the old version has a zip up the back i believe they're both still available the new version is more trouser like and they're both made of the same fabric it's halogen's um, ponte fabric which is fabulous because it washes really well you know it's not dry cleaning it's just like really really easy um and the reason that these are such a mess covered in cat fur and all wrinkly is because i just um pulled them out of my suitcase after my east coast trip um but i do really like how the new version has a fastening at the front so um the old version i guess you could say is more legging alike depending on what size you get you can have them look more trouser like so in the small they're more like a trouser on the in the extra small they're more like a legging um and then these new ones i got in a size two which fits me perfectly it kind of hits right around the top part of my hip um so they're medium waisted and they have a little faux pocket at the back i thought i wouldn't like the new version because the fastening would add bulk but it turns out it's actually really well done and it looks really good and i'm really pleased with them and those are actually the ones that i'm wearing in my latest lookbook so you can see what they look like in that video so those are the things that i've been loving wearing as we kind of slowly walk into spring i've been really liking doing the combination of some slim black pants either the leather ones or the halogen ones with a tank top and then my new bell apparel cardigan or another cardigan um i'm starting to feel a little bit like i've worn every single cashmere sweater so many times you know throughout the fall and winter and so rather than get new ones what i've been doing instead is layering up outfits with cardigans or layering a cardigan over a dress or something like that and being able to do that and kind of mix and match a little bit more i think has um you know kept my outfits feeling fresh and it sort of has reinvigorated me um and offered something a bit different than just wearing like you know my traditional 
pretty colored cashmere and pants combination that I'm always going on and on about. For my want category, I have three items. So the first one is low price, second is medium, and third is high. Um, so for my low price category, I have been really, really loving these Muji drawers. They're so satisfying. I really love how having them be transparent encourages me to organize everything inside really, really well um, for jewelry making supplies and craft supplies. And although it's my low price item, you know, they're still not cheap. And so I've been slowly getting more and organizing myself Marie Kondo style rather than going to Muji and going crazy and getting like 50 different items for several hundred dollars. And so I've just been going through like the different quadrants of my home and getting organizers and I really do like the clear acrylic ones. The second item is um, the Dyson hair system. So I'm so curious to see whether it's going to do anything on my frizzy hair and help me to get that dry bar like blow out without the dry bar price. So even though the sticker on the Dyson is high, it's really only like a dozen blow dries, which I definitely will go through in six months. So for me, it'll pay for itself. However, I'm really not convinced that it's gonna do that job and be able to smooth and volumize my hair. If any of you guys have tried it on a non-sponsored basis, because so many YouTubers have been sponsored to review the hair tool, um, let me know down below if I should get it. I'm really interested in getting it and reviewing it, but right now it's sold out everywhere, so it's probably gonna have to wait a couple of months. I am looking at maybe making a handbag purchase at some point in 2019, but it's not gonna be anytime soon. I'm so happy with my collection right now that I don't feel like I really need to add anything, but if I did, I would probably get something from YSL in either a pale pink or now I'm leaning towards a nude and I'm on the fence as to whether that would be a wallet on chain or if it would be something like a small collège or Lulu. So definitely something smaller that would be good for travel, maybe something I can wear cross body and I kind of want something that's really simple. So one of the bags that I'm actually thinking about and have never really considered before is the YSL camera bag with the tassel which is like a larger version of the Soho. I do really like the Disco Soho in New but I have the red one so I don't think I would get a second one um so I think that's you know something that's going to be at the back of my mind but not necessarily to purchase anytime soon um for my watch category I have quite a few things because I was sick recently you can probably still hear it in my voice it's like a week later it's crazy how long it's taken me to recover I'm never sick so it's like a shock um, and so between that and having all of your wonderful Tahitian Pearl orders, I've watched a lot of TV recently. Um, so the first series that I binge watched was Dirty John, which was so shocking. Like it's like the whole thing is just like mind-blowingly crazy. But Connie Brit Britton is a really good actress, as is Eric Bana. And so they take what would normally be really soapy and tacky and make it just really good and watchable. So that's a, you know, dating horror story show. Um, second one is a lot more serious. It's called Black Earth Rising. It is a thriller type show. I actually have kind of a mixed review on that one. John Goodman is really good in it and I think really supports the cast. And then the protagonist, Michaela Coel, is newcomer. I've never seen her in anything else at least and I think she does a fantastic job of portraying such a scarred and traumatized character. What I do think though is that her dialogue is very stilted and oftentimes rather than portraying how the character feels and is affected by everything that's happened to her through her actions and general acting, the dialogue sometimes is just a little bit overdone so you'll have her saying things like you can't expect me to act like a normal person and just like all of these kind of dramatic one-liners that I feel like don't really fit the series sometimes but it's still very very watchable and interesting and well done and so I would recommend it and the third one is a lot more light-hearted it's a John Hughes style series set in Britain I think in the south 
Um, it's called Sex Education and Jillian Anderson is freaking amazing in it. It's really fun to see her do something comedy and kind of lighthearted. She's such a fantastic sexy actress and then all of the younger cast is really fantastic too and their interaction with each other, like everybody's chemistry in the cast is stellar and I think Jillian Anderson's storyline with the really cute plumber is like adorable um, but I found it very entertaining and well written and it's also been renewed for a second season. So I wanted to tell you about my two favorite coffee table books over the last year. Um, so I'm not a huge coffee table styling person. I like to have a candle on it and maybe one or two decorative items and not a whole ton of books. I'm not a huge fan of like the really giant ones, but I do think it's fun to have a couple of smaller ones um, for like, let's say you have someone over and you're making a pot of tea and so they're kind of sitting on the couch and they want something to, you know, hold and look at. Um, I really love these two. So I got this one quite a while ago, but only have recently gotten around to reading it so it's a little dictionary of fashion by christian dior and then aesthetically i think it's really pretty partner is this chanel book because they're the same size um and this was a gift from my friend lisa who's also a viewer so hello lisa if you're watching um and this is by emma baxter wright and i had never heard of this book before it also has a companion prada one and what i really like about this one is that it actually has a lot more content than the dior one so um, it talks about all of the different influences on her designs. And now we're going to get into the eat parentheses drink category. And I have three really weird, totally unrelated items. And the first one is the weirdest looking. So in this Tupperware container, I have a soy based marinade, but it has a lot of other ingredients as well, like honey, sesame seeds, chilies. And into the marinade, you plunge some soft boiled eggs. You can do hard boiled too. Um, this is a recipe from Asian at Home, Song Kyung Lin Gust, on um, YouTube, and I love her recipes. Um, it definitely, that channel has gotten me cooking a lot more Asian food at home, and um, you guys probably already know about it. But she calls these crack eggs, they're called Mayak eggs, and they are freaking amazing. If you like ramen eggs, I like ramen eggs, but they're kind of one note salty, and what's really good about ramen eggs is... Um, the texture of the egg, you know, where you have the solid white, but the slightly creamy yolk. And so these have all of that, but the white itself gets so infused with flavor from the marinade. So it's not just salty, but it's got like this really nice balanced, salty, sweet, savory, spicy flavor that is just like so addictive. Sweet wise, I discovered these and I've never actually liked Reese's peanut butter cups because I don't like milk chocolate. These are from Costco. They are dark chocolate. Buy them and thank me later. They are so good. You have to eat them fairly quickly after you buy them though because the almond butter somehow hardens. So if you have this pack for like a few months, which you won't because they're so addictive, um, when you first buy them, the almond butter is creamy and then it does solidify a little bit and then they're not as good, even within the best before date. But if you have kids, like to put this in their lunchbox or into your own like lunch bag. So it's the perfect, satisfying, creamy, chocolatey bite. And of course, I'm going to use this video as an excuse to eat one. Let me show it to you. So here it is. So yummy because the almond butter is like a little tiny bit salty on the inside. Would actually go pretty well with the former. Um, I'm not a huge white wine person. I really like my bubbly. Rarely will I get a bottle of white wine like just to drink. Um, usually I'll get it to cook with and I'll have a bottle of like you know cheap Pinot Grigio in my in my fridge to cook with and sometimes drink from. This is the wine I served at my 30th birthday party and it was such a hit because it's a creamy Chardonnay that's not too okay. It's a local winery called Quails Gate that I actually went to before it was really big and now you can find this wine everywhere. Um, and whenever you go to Quails Gate in the interior, it's so busy there, which is crazy because the first time I went there, it was like totally empty. It's next to Mission Hill, which is a big winery. And into the succeed category, usually I give you guys tips on more kind of behavioral things for work, but today's is really more of an idea. And um, it's also about holding myself accountable because um, 
I think around a year ago, I told you guys that I was looking at um, taking the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners exam to become a certified fraud examiner. Um, so basically an expert in fraud. It's like four thick volumes like this about fraud investigation, um, the financial side of fraud, the legal side of fraud. It's kind of intense in terms of the volume of materials, but it's a really well-recognized, well-respected um, certification, and I already have a couple of certifications from the financial industry. What I'm getting at is that I put that on the back burner because I just have had so much going on in my life over the last year. And I realized also that I have a certain reluctance towards it because when I passed my bar exam for British Columbia in 2013, I remember celebrating and telling my friends who were celebrating the same thing. We all told each other that now we were done. You know, like if you get this final celebration where you're like, oh, I'm never taking an exam again and never being a student and that part of my life is over and you feel so relieved. And the thing is, in your career, I think it's better not to have that mindset and to instead resolve that you will continue learning forever, whether that's through a formal certification or not. Almost every single professional industry has some kind of continuing education, you know, like continuing legal education requirement now. And so that mindset just doesn't work anymore, I think, for most professions. And I've had to kind of accept that and realize that it's actually at odds with what I want for myself, which is to continue learning forever and getting to also pass on some of that learning through my teaching, which is something that I really enjoy and would like to lean into in the future. And so continuing to educate myself is a huge part of that. And so I sort of urge you not to make a similar resolution as, you know, many lawyers I know have that you're kind of done and everything else is going to be like against your will. Um, but rather if your work um, or I don't know, circumstances allow you to get further certifications, further education, maybe do a master's in your spare time, go for it. It may take you a while because working and studying is really tough to balance. I consider myself to be very organized um, and I have a video on that on how I get everything done. But nonetheless, it's still super, super tough to squeeze that in. And so it can often be a process of disappointment where you have to kind of continue to do it over a longer period than you would like. Um, but I still think it's worth it. And it's something that is valued and that will enrich you and continue to keep those wheels turning for you and enrich your career and your intellectual abilities. That's my goal. You guys can hold me accountable to it. And maybe I will do a few more videos on that sort of thing in the future on studying and study tips as I sort of Get those wheels turning again so i hope you found this video interesting or helpful or entertaining or, or any combination of the above thank you so much for watching and i will see you in my next installment bye